Hello, my name is Jane Bolsover and I'm the craft consultant of the WI. In this short skills video, I'm going to show you how to do broderie purse. What is broderie purse, you probably ask? It's actually a form of applique. It's originated and was popular in the 17th century. And it's the technique of cutting out motifs from one particular fabric and then applying them via applique onto a second base fabric. So choosing a fabric that's suitable for a broderie purse, you need to have a fabric that's got a motif, good motif in that you can cut out. You can isolate from the background cloth. So something like this flower and these leaves would be good. Here's another example of another flower where you could cut out the poppies and the leaves here. Or you could go contemporary and do yourself a tea party, cutting out cups, saucers, cakes. But for this particular example, I'm using this contemporary fabric, which has birds. So the birds that I want to use are these little babies here. I quite like him and him and that one, but I also like this little tiny bee here. So what I'm going to do to start off with, I need to isolate the bits that I want to do. So I'm going to cut out a bit of fabric that covers the areas that I want to cut out, it'll be bigger. And then I'm going to also be able to cut out some leaves as well separately. Okay, so now I've cut out my three birds that I want to use. And the way we're going to attach these onto our base cloth is what's called a paper backed fusible web. So this is paper and on one side, it's a special paper, you can feel it's rough and it actually is covered with the glue. So what I want to do is cut a piece of paper that fits exactly the size of our piece of fabric we've done here, making sure there's no overlaps over the edge. And we're going to press this onto the back using an iron. Okay, I've now cut out all my bits and pieces that I'm going to applique onto my back cloth. So what I've got here is I've prepared the front of my cushion cover here which is what I'm going to be applying these onto. And the way we do it is we now peel off the paper that's on the back very carefully. So as we peel it off, the glue is now on the back of the fabric. And I'm going to start to arrange them on my fabric how I want them to be. If you look on this cushion, what I've done is I've actually put a border on here, which I've appliqued on already. This is a bias strip and I've just put straight strips on here. It's about eight centimetres from the edge. But what this does is it gives me a frame to hold the pieces in. So I'm just going to arrange them how I think I want them to be. Uh, something like that, I think. I'm going to put this little boy over here. So peel off all the backings. Remember to peel the backings off because if you leave the paper on, it isn't going to work. So I'm going to continue laying all of these on until I've got them how I want them. OK, and here's my last bit. I think I'm happy with that. I'll turn it around and then you can see my arrangement. Now, all of this, as I say, has got glue on the back of it, but we don't want it to move around because it's taken me a little while just laying that down how I want it. So this is a pressing cloth. It's just a piece of lining that I'm going to lay over the top. Hide it all away. Hang on a minute. Let's just do it that way, down, like that. I've got it on top there. I might even just put a couple of pins to hold it because I've got to take this over to my ironing board lie that on top, hope nothing's moving around, and then we are going to iron them in place. So, I'll put a bit of pressure, but we don't want too much pressure because my cushion cover on the front here, oh, oh I'm steaming here, I'm dropping water, is quilted, and if I push down too hard, it means that I'm going to flatten all my quilting. So 
hopefully what we need to do is just heat it up so the glue melts. It's a cotton fabric, it's not too thick, so hopefully that has done the trick. Let's have a little look, peel it back. Just let it cool down a minute because obviously the glue's still tacky. And then we can have a little look. Actually, that's pretty good, look, that's pretty stuck down. Excellent, I'm quite pleased with that. I'll just check down here. Yep, that's all stuck. Pretty good. So that's a hold up. So now we have to machine it in place. Right, we're now going to machine all around the edges. Now, what we're going to be using is a zigzag stitch or satin stitch. So you need to set your sewing machine, make sure you've got the right foot on. I've put a craft foot on here, which is actually perfect see-through. So that will enable me to see when I'm going around the edges. It's much easier to do that with a foot that you can see through. You can also get applique foots for your machine, if your machine does one, which actually allows it to go round. It's usually a bit smaller than the standard craft foot. It allows you to manoeuvre round the pieces easier and also doesn't squash the stitching that you've done behind. But don't worry, you don't need one of them. You can do it just as well with a craft foot. Now, obviously we're going to be sewing around here. So we need to think about what color thread we're going to use. Now I could go for a black thread because I've got a bl black outline, but some places there isn't a heavy black outline. So instead what I've decided to do is go for a variegated thread. Now this is a thread which comes variegated and it changes colour along the length of the thread and what this will do I thought it would give us an interesting pattern all the way around. So to start off with I've threaded the machine up with that but in the bottom I haven't used the variegated thread I've just put a cream thread in my bobbin because it's a cream backing here. So I'm setting my sewing machine to a zigzag stitch so I'm clicking across to the zigzag and I'm setting it the width at a small two because that's how far the stitch is going to go across. I'm doing the length even tinier to a 0 0.7 because that's how close the stitch is together. So it's a bit like when we're doing a buttonhole stitch, we want it to be a short stitch in width but very close together and that gives us the satin stitch. So let's find somewhere to start. I think I'm going to start on this branch here. So I'm going to put that under the sewing machine and I'm going to drop the needle down so that it's just on top of the applique. Hold your two threads, so that's your bobbin thread and your needle thread. Do drop your needle down into the applique, and once you've done that, that just stops the threads going down under the machine, into the bottom and raveling up. Once you've made that one stitch, you can then let go of the threads. Okay, so now I'm going the stitch. I mean, practice on something first before you start, but the stitch is actually going half and half over the raw edge. So the idea is that I am covering the raw edge. Hopefully you'll be able to see as it emerges from the sewing machine at the back, that I am covering the raw edge. So the idea is to make sure that we have no raw edges left at all. And you can see, because it's a variegated thread, how it's changing colour. So it's going through the different colours. And then when I want to change direction, I'm going to go down, make sure the needle's down through the fabric, lift your foot, turn, do a few stitches that way, needle down, lift, turn direction. I'm then going to go around the leaf, so again, needle down, lift, turn. So there's a lot of manoeuvrability in this, so you've got to keep turning and changing direction. Keep it nice and slow so you've got control. 
and hopefully as I go around this leaf you'll be able to see the zigzag stitching and then what you need to do is go around every single shape right when you've got a tight corner like this make sure the needle is down through the fabric reposition I'll get this out of get around this leaf and then I'll take it out and hold it up and then you can see So it's all about handling, taking your time, and making sure you're absolutely covering all the edges. So here now is my broderie purse completed on a cushion cover. You also see that I've got piping around the edge of this um, because in one of our other skills videos, I show you how to make piping. So if I look on, the, if you look on the back, you can see where I've pliqued all the shapes on here and everything is completely appliqued in place. So have fun experimenting with the own appliques. Please remember that we're doing a series of little videos which will build to make a cushion cover at the end. Thank you, bye bye for now.